When you flip on a light switch, have you ever thought about where your electricity comes from? Is there a giant hamster wheel spinning in your basement? Or is Thor sending lightning bolts down from the sky? That would be pretty cool, but thankfully we've figured out how to make electricity without needing special powers. The Earth provides everything we need to turn nature into energy. From coal and oil to water and wind, these resources keep our homes and cities powered 24-7. So why should we care about where our electricity comes from? Think about your day. What do you depend on that uses electricity? Just about everything. From turning on the TV to drinking cold milk from the fridge, playing video games, or taking a hot shower, electricity makes all of these things possible. Life without electricity would be a lot less comfortable. There are many ways to generate electricity, but not all energy is created equal. Coal, natural gas, oil, and nuclear power plants all make power by burning fuel. This comes at a cost. When you burn the fuel, you destroy it so that it can't be used again. We call these non-renewable resources. And burning coal and gas also releases carbon dioxide into the air. Carbon dioxide is a gas that occurs in nature. It's in the air we're breathing right now. Plants need it to survive. But too much carbon dioxide is bad for the Earth. Luckily, we've also figured out how to harness the power of wind, sunlight, and water to make energy. They don't release carbon dioxide, and wind, sunlight, and water can be used over and over again without being destroyed. We call these renewable resources. Together, all of these are ways that we generate electricity to power our lives. Have you ever noticed any of these types of energy being made in your community? Which of them do you think are powering your homes right now? Did you know that the Pacific Northwest has the cleanest energy in America? And we can all agree that clean is good, right? Our parents like it when our rooms are clean, we like clean parks, and our clothes sure smell better when they're clean. So what exactly is clean energy? Remember how coal and gas power plants burn fuel, which produces waste and releases carbon dioxide into the air? Well, clean energy doesn't do that. Wind power, solar power, and hydropower are all carbon-free, meaning that they don't produce carbon dioxide, just electricity. This keeps our planet and us healthier. So how is the Northwest creating the cleanest energy in the US? We're home to a powerful renewable resource, water. The Columbia River Basin, surrounded by mighty mountains and fed by numerous snowmelt streams, gives us water all year long, day or night. When these rivers flow through structures called hydroelectric dams, they generate clean electricity called hydropower. In the Northwest, we make and use a lot of hydropower. Not only do rivers generate nearly all the renewable energy in our region, but depending on where you live, hydropower also makes up more than 50% of your total electricity. This means that at least half of every smartphone charged, movie watched, or popcorn microwaved is thanks to these mighty rivers. Today, we're going to explore how hydropower starts as a snowflake and turns into the electricity that arrives at your home. Join us as we take you on the journey from water drop to energy watt, traveling from the dam to your doorstep. Here in the Northwest, it rains a lot. This might seem like a bummer when you want to play outside, but it's actually a good thing because water is the fuel for hydropower. Did you know that the Earth has all the water it ever had or ever will have? And that the water you drink has cycled around the globe for billions of years. Crazy, right? That's thanks to the water cycle. As the sun shines on oceans, rivers, and lakes, it heats the water, which evaporates and rises into the atmosphere where it cools and condenses, forming clouds. These clouds turn into water droplets that fall back to the Earth's surface as precipitation like rain, snow, and hail. Melting snow and rain then flow back into our rivers and oceans, and the whole process starts all over again. Water is recycled by nature, which makes it a renewable resource. And because hydropower uses water to create electricity, the water can be used over and over again, and that makes hydropower a renewable energy source. 
So where does the water for hydropower come from? The answer is found way up in the mountains. Snow. When you see snow, you probably think of throwing snowballs and sledding. When scientists see snow, they see fuel for hydropower. Melting snow is the main source of water feeding our rivers, which keeps dams running and our lights on. Scientists pay close attention to how much snow falls in the mountains so they can carefully plan for our future energy needs. Of course, we do have other sources of renewable energy. Wind power and solar power are also available from nature, though they're not quite as reliable as hydropower. We call these intermittent resources because the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine. This means they can't always produce electricity. But because the rivers are always flowing, hydropower is the most reliable renewable energy here in the Northwest. Now it's time to take a trip down the river to see exactly how hydropower is made. First, there's the not-so-secret formula that explains how hydroelectric dams work. Water plus gravity equals hydropower. Have you ever seen a waterfall? Falling water is really powerful. Ancient civilizations like the Greeks figured this out and used the power of falling water to turn wheels for grinding grain and pumping water. Today we use a modern version to make electricity. We call it a turbine. A turbine has blades that spin when water flows over them, like a boat propeller or a pinwheel. In a dam, the turbines are located inside a building called a powerhouse. As water falls from the top of the dam through a tunnel, the pressure of rushing water spins the giant turbine. The turbine turns a shaft that spins magnets past copper coils, and this is what makes electricity. In addition to making electricity, dams also provide flood protection and water for farms. They help big ships carrying cargo travel more easily on the river and also give us places to boat, swim, and fish. You might notice that some dams have what look like big lakes behind them. These are called reservoirs, and they're used to store water for the future. Think of it like a squirrel that stores nuts and seeds in the summer to eat during the winter. Some dams can collect water when it's melting from the mountains and store it to be used later in the year. Hydropower can respond quickly to changing energy needs, like a car that can speed up, slow down, or start and stop quickly. So too can hydropower, and reservoirs help hydropower stay flexible. Say it's a really hot day, and everyone is using their air conditioners and fans. This uses a lot of extra electricity, so the dams need to generate more of it to keep up. Dams can quickly let in more water into their turbines to make more power. When the weather cools down and we turn off our air conditioners, the dams will adjust to create less energy. Hydropower's flexibility makes it a great team player with solar power and wind power. On sunny or windy days, hydropower can step aside to let wind and solar power make electricity. Because the river is always flowing, when the wind dies down or the sun sets, hydropower can ramp up to meet the energy needs of the Northwest. It's kind of like a sports team. One person can't score all the points alone. It takes everyone playing together and helping each other out to win the game. Now that we know how hydropower is made, let's take the final leg of electricity's journey to reach your doorstep. From the hydropower dam or other power plant, transmission lines carry electricity over long distances, sometimes hundreds of miles, to reach your neighborhood. The metal towers holding up these wires are more than 100 feet tall. Think of transmission lines as energy superhighways. It's like when your family goes on a long road trip and they take the highway instead of the small streets. The transmission grid is so powerful that it can carry electricity between states and even across the country. From there, the electricity travels to a substation. The electricity is high voltage when it arrives, meaning it's too powerful to be used by our appliances and electronics. At the substation, the electricity is changed into lower voltage power, so we can use it in our homes. You've probably driven by a substation in your neighborhood and not even known the important work happening there. The energy then travels along distribution lines that you can find right outside your door. Distribution lines are smaller than transmission lines, and the poles are shorter and usually made of wood. Sometimes the lines are even buried underground. Instead of an electricity superhighway, think of distribution lines as the smaller streets in your neighborhood that you drive to get to school or maybe the grocery store. 
Finally, the distribution lines connect to your house, where the electricity flows into your outlets and light switches to power your TV, refrigerator, and so much more. An important note on safety. The electricity that travels on power lines is awesome, but it's also dangerous. Never climb on transmission towers, power poles, or nearby trees. Also, don't fly kites, model airplanes, or drones near power lines. The energy flowing through these wires can shock you, causing serious injury or worse. If you see a power line or pole lying on the ground, stay far away and tell an adult. They'll call the power company so that someone can come fix the problem. It might be tempting to get a closer look at this amazing technology, but it's safer for everyone if we keep our distance. Phew, what a journey! From a snowflake falling over the mountains in winter to a light bulb turning on in your house today. The next time you play a video game or watch a movie with your family, think of the power flowing from the river to your home. The incredible journey of hydropower would not be possible without an organization where, right now, thousands of people are working behind the scenes to keep your lights on. It's called the Bonneville Power Administration. But what is Bonneville Power? And what's so special about it? You remember how we talked about the tall metal towers and transmission lines that carry electricity from state to state? Bonneville Power takes care of 15,000 miles of those transmission lines. That's long enough to stretch across the entire country more than five times. And they manage lots of substations in between, making sure that electricity gets safely and reliably to our homes and communities. There's another way that Bonneville Power helps keep your lights on. Every month, your house gets a bill for the electricity you use. The power company that you pay either creates their own energy, or more likely, they buy it from Bonneville Power. Bonneville sells electricity from 31 hydropower dams and one nuclear power plant in the Northwest. They're kind of like a farmer who sells their apples to a grocery store, where your family then buys them. The best part is that almost all of Bonneville Power's electricity comes from hydropower, so it's renewable and carbon-free. Bringing clean energy to so many communities takes a lot of work. Thousands of people team up to keep hydropower flowing. Let's check out some of the different jobs that people do at Bonneville Power. Line workers repair high voltage lines and towers. They're not afraid of heights. You'll find them working rain or shine, night or day to fix power lines and get your electricity back on after a storm. Substation operators are key to keeping the lights on. They make sure all the equipment is working correctly to reduce the voltage of electricity and send it to your home. Electricians work directly with electricity. They take care of and fix problems in the Northwest electricity grid to make sure the power is safely delivered to you. Engineers are problem solvers. They help figure out important things like what's the best shape for a transmission tower based on where it's being built. Biologists are scientists who study the environment. At Bonneville, they look out for fish and wildlife. Accountants are people who keep track of the money coming in and out of Bonneville Power. They keep an eye on the budget. There are even historians, meteorologists, lawyers, and filmmakers working at Bonneville. Together, all of these people are working to bring you clean energy day and night. We hope that the next time you flip on a light switch, open the fridge, or turn on the television, that you'll think about the incredible journey that your electricity has taken from snowflake to light bulb, thanks to the hardworking people at Bonneville Power. <laughs>